AMD sent me a new laptop to play with, and this thing just does what you need it to. And here's the best part, without completely breaking the bank. At sub £1,000, this thing has really impressed me and confused me. From coffee shop gaming to literally outperforming my gaming tower and keeping up with my dedicated content creation laptop that cost twice as much. There's been a change in the gaming laptop space over the last few years. They've become a hell of a lot cheaper and they are way more efficient, which is great for a few things. They can land themselves in the hands of more consumers and actually do what they're meant to do which seems really silly to say. Now, don't get me wrong, you buy a gaming laptop and you expect to be able to take this thing anywhere and game, don't you, right? You'd probably be annoyed when you found out that you'd have to take that chunky power brick that it comes with everywhere with you just to enjoy anything over 30 FPS. Playing just popular games at anything over 60 FPS at max settings 1080p from the internal battery has been a far cry for most gaming laptop buyers. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because there's so many variations of this machine sat right in front of me, it's crucial that you get the right one for your needs. And we'll discuss all that as we tear this thing apart. This thing's called the Asus Tough Gaming A16 Advantage Edition. And inside this specific variant, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7435HS for the CPU and a Radeon RX 7700S with eight gigabyte dedicated graphics for the GPU. Now, if you flip this thing over and take off the bottom, the RAM can be user upgraded with two slots available and you've got an extra NVMe slot for upgrading your storage down the line. Pretty neat. But it just so turns out that the efficiency of a gaming laptop is its main Achilles heel. If it's not efficient, the battery performance will be terrible. With this machine, it's basically the Ryzen and Radeon combo that make it the Advantage Edition. The advantage being enough power to get most things done while still being highly efficient. Team Red are actively working towards efficiency goals with power management features that can direct power to where it's needed most. So first we need to look at how much power this thing sucks up and try and apply some context as well. We have plugged in a power meter to see what it takes to get 100 frames per second on my screen right now. And we are hovering around 320 watts from the wall. Now I have to say, it does blow my mind that I'm currently pulling a further 20 FPS playing on a gaming laptop than I was on my full on gaming desktop. But the question is, how much power are we using? Because right now, I'm currently playing this off of the battery. About 250 watts here. Bear in mind, we're charging the battery of this laptop at the same time. However, 144 frames per second, way more than my big gaming PC could muster. That would literally fit inside of here. I redid these tests when the battery was fully charged and it took 165 watts to pull 165 FPS. If you put this thing in its silent mode, it pulls around the same FPS as my gaming PC whilst only using 118 watts from the wall, meaning this laptop is 63% more efficient at 100 FPS gaming than my fully decked out PC from 2017 with a GTX 1080 Ti. My gaming PC costing me 10p per hour to keep alive, whereas this costs four for the exact same experience. As far as battery is concerned, gaming with this thing in its silent mode at 1440p pulling 90 FPS, this thing managed 52% over half an hour. Meaning, if you're playing some FPS games, you've probably got about an hour on the battery with 90 FPS at 1440p, which isn't easy to pump out, it has to be said. All coming from a chassis that weighs 2.2 kilograms all in and about 28 mil thick at its thickest point. Speaking of its chassis, I think this thing looks ace from all angles, and with it being the tough lineup, it has an actual standard that they test this thing to, which means it's gonna be durable. 
Albeit the screen isn't the brightest or most colour accurate I've seen, but I think we're asking for a little too much here, bearing in mind that sub £1,000 price point. The screen also has a matte finish, which I like for gaming. As far as I.O. is concerned, you can find the power port, a full-size LAN port, HDMI 2.1 with two USB-Cs, and these are power delivery and can drive displays, and then you've got two USB-A 3.1 ports and a combi headphone microphone jack. A great set of ports, the only thing I would flag is no card reader on here. A lot of people buy a machine like this for content creation. But back to those USB-Cs for a second, if you think about it, if you have a docking station that can provide 100 watts of power, you can basically plug one cable into this laptop with just enough power to keep the battery topped up whilst interfacing with a display, audio, keyboard and mouse. So basically you've got yourself a USB-C powered gaming console with a built-in battery and screen. Now, if you want to run this thing in turbo mode, you will have to use the included power brick, but it's nice that that USB-C power delivery is here. It means if you're out on the go, you can attach a 100 watt power bank to this thing and actually have a good few hours of solid gaming performance in silent mode, which is really cool. Let's look at this thing from a creator's perspective and try and give some context against some other popular machines. So I've been using an M1 Pro for all of my content creation needs on YouTube since about 2021. I've loaded the exact same Premiere Pro project for one of our older videos onto both of these machines. This is 10-bit 4K footage in a timeline, so let's see what it's like. Taking into effect the RRP of both of these laptops when they were new, this is double the price of the Asus TUF. So this processor war is getting interesting. Let's try the render. Done. So it took an extra 38.26 seconds on this machine to render the exact same video in 1080p, which tells me that this is a very competent editing machine and this is basically just as competent for a Windows machine. Very, very impressive again still. Now that's not a bad result. Bear in mind, both of the laptops during that test were on their battery power. With this thing hooked up to its power adapter and its turbo mode selected, it was only eight seconds behind the M1 Pro at the exact same render, which is, yeah, very well done. So all that's to say, this is a really competent machine, both using battery power and the included power adapter. And it really doesn't break the bank at all for what you're getting. But this is where the confusion lies. You have to get the right one. The Team Red GPU and CPU with inside this device is enough for most people, I would say, and gives you the efficiency to go along with it so you can actually game on the internal battery. You can use your gaming laptop for its intended purpose, to be a gaming laptop, and you need efficiency for that. I do think that if you're looking for a gaming laptop under a grand that actually does what it says on the tin and has the performance when docked as well, I'd seriously take a look at this model specifically. You can find this AMD Advantage Edition laptop at Curry's. I'll stick all the links down there below the fold for you lot. Hope you guys have enjoyed anyway. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.